Hello, and um, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've posted anything, and just so you're all aware, I have actually moved on to Aramusha from Nabushi, so from now on, I'll be showing Aramusha content. Now that ranked tournaments are back for this weekend, I went ahead and recorded some tournament footage, and I'm posting it here so we can analyze it together. If you're interested in Aramusha, please keep watching my channel. I will have Nabushi content in the future, however. Thanks so much. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how I do. Okay, our first match here is going to be against a Shigoki. Shigoki is not a bad matchup for Aramusha at all, thanks to the speed of our attacks. We can oftentimes catch him with an attack um, when he thinks he's safe because of his hyper armor. We can sneak in too and cancel his hyper armor out and stagger him. It doesn't always work like there. <laughs> I got smacked in the middle of my attack. Um, but it, it does uh, help me against a majority of Shugokis. Oops. There you go. Nice fainted heavy into a guard break. Trying to find my way in past his defense. And then I just completely whiff that parry. I could have dodged, I could have parried, and I did neither. So I, instead I died. Too bad. Armusha has a pretty good chunk of health. Um, he's almost like an assassin, but he has more health than generally uh, assassins do. So that's a nice advantage of playing as an Armusha. Plus, he's got a static guard not a um, reflex guard, which is also an advantage in my opinion. Having played a lot of assassin characters, I hate the reflex guard. So here I'm doing some nice mix-ups. I know it seems crazy to do a heavy after a heavy, but sometimes people, they think you're gonna faint it and then they just whiff uh, the block and you get through with a nice top heavy or side heavy. In that instance, Victory. I finished him off with a nice little re uh, with a nice little full block, or as I think it's called, um, blade blockade. There we go. Finished him off with a blade blockade into an unblockable side. So, okay, third round. He gets me with the cheeky uh, charge of the oni there. Or it's like the embrace move. And here I go again. He's not really parrying many of my attacks, so I feel pretty safe in just throwing out uh, some chained combos. And here I guard break him for some strange reason and then follow it up. I don't know what I was thinking there. You never want to do that when you're out of stamina. You can't really follow up many attacks when you're out of stamina and you guard break. Now if you toss him into a wall, that's a different story, but... Generally speaking, it's just better to block. And then there we go. Nice little feint into a light. And then top heavy finishes him out. He doesn't block it. This player is at a low, low enough level to where he doesn't um, have the greatest of reflexes. And I'm guilty of that. I'm, I'm not knocking him in any way. I'm just stating what I'm observing is he's having some blocking issues. It'll be a much harder fight against someone who has very good blocking skills. Okay, round four. So here I'm getting in close. I am expecting his Oni charge, as we did that last time, and managed to dodge it. Unfortunately, I do run out of stamina, thanks to his headbutt. But I just keep my cool, dodge out of the way of that attack, and manage to sneak in my own. And win, just like that. I love that execution plus that um, effect. Looks just really nice. Victory. Also love this outfit that I came up with. It's pretty sweet looking. Okay, going into our second round or match, <clears throat> we're going up against a Rep 1 Valkyrie. <sighs> And this is a pretty boring first round because the person doesn't realize the match has started. Now, ordinarily, I would honestly wait for them 
But thanks to matchmaking giving you zero points if someone uh, disconnects due to inactivity, I tend to try and kill them as fast as I can so I can still get the points um, without having wasted my time and having to fight a bot for three rounds. So, uh, Thankfully they do come back for the second round, so I felt kind of bad about that first round. Let's go ahead and see how I approach Valkyrie. She's a one of those characters that is both defensive and, and aggressive, though with her recent reworks, she's much more aggressive than she honestly used to be. Trying out various things here. She does a nice feint into a shield charge into a trip. Another feint into a shield charge, and then a guard break. Now here, if someone's out of stamina and they fall on the ground, you absolutely want to do two side heavies while they're on the ground. It'll actually connect if you parried them out of stamina onto the ground. And it does 70 damage. If you reverse the video, she had pretty much full health. And after the follow-up with the two heavies, she had, I think, one and a half bars of health left. So it's definitely worth it to try and get that double side heavy on an out of stamina knockdown. All right, so I'm just... Uh, Gonna try and follow up with some fainted attacks, see what can get through. She's very quick with that light. I tend to miss it a majority of the time, but the second follow up light is predictable. And I tend to be able to parry it. She's expecting her to be launching attacks at me, so I'm trying to be cautious while still throwing out attacks. Unfortunately for her, She's going to mess up a shield charge, and I just win. Against Valkyrie, you're actually at an advantage if you keep your distance. She's a character that's very good in close quarters. So if you keep your distance from her, she's forced to use more of her range moves, like her top light uh, forward jumping attack, as well as her shield charge. So you can take advantage of the predictability the predictable nature of those moves. Um, so make sure when you're fighting Valkyrie, don't get in too close. That way you can gain some advantage over her toolkit. Getting now into our third round against another Valkyrie. This one is also rep one, just like the last, but this one is really not as good as the last Valkyrie we fought. Now here, once again, I'm keeping my distance. I close in, but only to do fainted attacks to try and bait some things that I can parry. I managed to get a nice little dodge into a guard break. Anytime you wall splat someone, you want to follow it up with a side heavy. And then if they fall on the ground, another side heavy. If they don't fall on the ground, follow it up with a light attack. Dodge. Oh, didn't dodge. My bad. Little tip or trick for aspiring Aramusha players. If you're almost dead, and they're almost dead, just use your zone attack. It's a very quick, and it looks weird when it comes out, so they kind of have trouble understanding where they should be blocking if they're not used to playing Aramusha. So if you're in a tight spot, zone attack can close out the win for you. Um, I would highly recommend fainting into your zone attack, however. There we go, nice little dodge. You can follow up a guard break with a top heavy, by the way. So just so you know, the best move to use after a guard break is your top heavy attack. And there I just feint a nice chained combo and uh, I'm able to beat them. This person has some issues blocking, as you can see. I'm doing fairly basic combo chains and they're just not able to handle it. So that's what I mean when I say they're not quite as good as the last person was. The last person was much more consistent in terms of being able to block my attacks. If you parry a light attack as Arabusha, the correct follow-up, or I should say rather the most effective follow-up, is a side heavy into a top light. That'll do the max amount of damage that you can do after a light parry. And it is guaranteed. If you do a heavy parry, uh, the best thing you can do is a top heavy. 
here actually miss kicking her into the fountain, but I still kill them anyway. So everything works out. Not much to say on that one. Really, I just did kind of your basic bread and butter combos, and they just couldn't handle it. All right, let's get into the next match. All right, surprise, surprise, round number four, and it's another Valkyrie. By the way, these were three different Valkyries. There was two groups uh, in this tournament. Well, let's just say things go, don't go too well for the old boy. Um, this is a very defensive player. I know they're starting out very aggressive here, but throughout the rest of the match, they are very, like, fainting almost every attack, looking to parry my attacks when I try and, you know, parry theirs. Um, defending rock solid, and then using Valkyrie's advantage, which is her unblockables, her shield bash, and her sweep, um, to really get in the best damage on me. If you just watch the way that I'm attacking, I'm not fainting enough. I should have been fainting way more, should have been way more patient in this match. Part of playing this game, and I've said it before, is reading your opponent and understanding their mindset. This person's mindset was very defensive. They're really just looking to counter my play. They're looking at what I'm doing, and then they're countering it. I, I think I miss every single sweep. I don't dodge a single sweep either, and that has nothing to do with them. That's all me. But this person is just on top of their defense. They're, they do a very good job. And I, um, unfortunately, don't do enough. You know, some people say, well, this is, she's a better character than yours. I don't think so. There are advantages to both. She may have some very strong options, but that doesn't mean you can't pull out the win uh, with Armusha. Round three. Okay. She also keeps her distance, uh, interestingly. She's not really dashing into me all the time or trying to put a lot of pressure on. She's just... See what she did there? She fainted two attacks in a row and then anticipated that I might go through with my third attack, so dashed backwards ready to do a shield charge to catch me, and it didn't work for her because I decided not to do a third attack. <laughs> Um, but she's just very defensively counter-minded, and that's a great way to play this game. You do not have to be an aggressive player to be good at this game. In fact, I know it's been harped on by people in the community, but defense is actually a very strong way to play uh, this game. Just being patient. She does her full combo, and I finally dodge that sweep, but I don't have anything I can follow up with because I'm out of stamina. I'm trying to catch her. Like, the reason why I'm not fainting some of these attacks is because I figure she's going to expect me to faint it. But no, this was a very patient player. She looks at my attack, waits for me to faint it or not, and then reacts. She doesn't assume what I'm going to be doing. And then here I just get knocked out with another spear sweep and killed. Unfortunate, but it happens. You run into people who just, they're solid players, and sometimes you don't adapt fast enough to overcome them. Has been eliminated from the semifinals. All right, so that was our first ranked Aramusha Tournament Duels video. I hope you all liked it, especially if you play Aramusha. Unfortunately, I didn't win, but that's what this series is about. It's about examining our losses. Uh, when I win, I don't always have the most to say, but when I lose, definitely it's interesting to take a look and see what could we have done better. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Please consider subscribing as well if you'd like to see all my future content. Thanks for watching, and remember, fight with honor for honor.